2001, Rally Trophy. The first ever game made by Bugbear Entertainment Studios was a big hitter. Although you didn't have much content in terms of races and things to do, but that was compensated by the sheer enjoyment of driving. The Finnish magazine Pellet mentioned that Rally Trophy set the standard for all future driving games. Other than the amazing physics, there really wasn't much to do apart from just, well, race. And even then, this game won the Best Racing Game on PC award, and then in the next year in 2002, it was still nominated for the same prize, but that time it went to NASCAR. Two thousand two, flat out prototype. This series, this series is why we're all here. Let's be honest. The flat out franchise is the one that put Bugbear on the map. But before all that happened, there was a prototype which leaked from the studio. You can see it looks like a potato version of flat out one. But what's most notable about this piece is that during the race, you can actually exit the vehicle and run on foot like a small derby GTA. This is a nice touch for checking out details on the map, so quite a handy tool actually. Oh, and you can legally download the flat out prototype for free if you'd like to try it. 2003, Tough Drugs. This casually looks like the most American game ever. You race monster pickup trucks in a derby arena made of dirt which just makes it ironic that it was made by a Finnish studio. Hell yeah, Bugbear is from Finland, for those who didn't know. But back to the game, Tough Trucks is a classic monster truck racer that surprisingly didn't become too popular. 2004, flat out. This is the big one, the one you all know. Cars from the junkyard staying intact only by shoddy welds and magic, racing each other basically till death. You can fly out of your windscreen if you crash too hard, and your engine can catch fire if you crash too much. This game probably has the best destruction system found in any racing game ever in 2004. It revolutionized how we look at damage in racing games. Add to that a captivating derby system and a stunt system where you fling your driver out of the car to perform certain disciplines, and you get the silliest, most fun car racing game in 2004. 2005, Glimmerati. This game is for something called the N-Cage, which was a gaming platform made by Nokia. At this point, you probably get what kind of games Bugbear focuses on. Glimmerati, however, might look lame by today's standards, but just like every single Bugbear game released, it mostly received an 8 or 9 out of 10 ratings. The story is also quite captivating, with you being a rich heir, street racing rich kids for fun, dominance of certain streets, and to remain in the rich kid racing club. 2006, Flat Out 2. Once again, most of you watching will now shed a tear of nostalgia. Bugbear pushed the limits of destruction even further with this one, enhancing the fragility of the cars and making it way more enjoyable to scoop your opponent's tiny pepper car and smash it into the barrier. They implemented a reward system, where you get money if you crash into your opponents and destroy their cars. The Nitro system also got an upgrade, although mostly visual, but it feels a whole lot more satisfying. Apart from that, we got a better car tier system, now being able to race both the junkyard finds and brand new race cars. Everything was just better. 2007. Flat Out Ultimate Carnage. This game is basically just an updated port of Flat Out 2. A lot of people complain that Flat Out 2's graphics actually look worse than Flat Out 1's. Along with some lack of content and some bugs, this was all fixed in Ultimate Carnage. It's the ultimate answer to the problem where you love the game and wish there could be more of it. There's more drivers to compete against, old revamped cars along with the brand new ones, the perfect gift for someone that absolutely adored Flat Out 2 which was me. 2007, Sega Rally Rainbow. Also known as just Sega Rally in Europe, this is Bugbear's second shot at making a proper rally game and they have nailed it again. The Ravo in the name stands for revolution, as they once again tried to revolutionize how we play and see rally games mostly in the handling department. 
They added a very simple setup option, great cars and tracks, and onwards you go. It's a very simple concept that just follows the conventional rules of rally games. Enjoyable and loved. Easy 2012. Ridge Racer Unbounded. The eighth installment of the Ridge Racer series, the first one to come to Windows and the first one to be developed by Bugbear. Namco, the publisher, wanted to sway from the original drifting premise of the game and lean more towards a burnout y destruction and combat racing style. Well, who would be better for this job than Bugbear? It also has a small storyline in the city of Shatter Bay, which is a neat name. Basically, just street racers with no sense of self preservation race using a classic zero roll policy. 2014 Wreckfest. Now, the big one. If you thought Bugbear developed the turd by the name of Flatout 3, you are wrong. It was a piece of shit because they handed it to a different studio. Meanwhile, when Bugbear was done doing side quests, they put their heads together and made a Bugbear classic. Wreckfest is a no rules racing game where you can race bangers from the junkyard along with some random vehicles like a school bus, a three wheeler, a lawn mower, or a combine harvester. Banger races are back, figure eight races are back, and most importantly, demolition derbies are back. A true, proper bugbear classic. 2023, Wreckfest Season 2. This is not a standalone game, but a Season 2 huge update for Wreckfest. Countless new cars, tracks, and events add so much content to the game, it basically counts as a new release. You can probably see by the video in the background that it's going wild, and that's great. I need to know that the studio I played my first ever video game from is still doing okay. 2024. 